Hi, Doug here with EJD Labs. I had something recently nagging me about compact fluorescence and incandescence, and which is better and if the claims they make are really accurate. So today I'm going to put that to test. Behind me I set up a rig with a luminosity meter as well as a current meter, power factor, you name it. I calibrated it and set it up. So both of these bulbs are 100 watt equivalent. We'll run them through some tests and see what we come up with. Let's get started. Alright, so let's get started here. This is the CFL that was sent to me by my power company as part of their energy saving initiative. This bulb uh, is a 23 watt use and it claims to be a 100 watt equivalent. So I set up this rig with a, here's my luminosity or photometer. This detects the light output. Uh, the sensor is located, located right here. I have it set it up on the axis of the bulb. I also calibrated it so it should equal 4,000 lumens or lux on here uh, to be equivalent to a 100 watt light bulb. So first thing to do is fire it up. And right there we're at 3,000. Now like most CFLs, we're going to have to let it warm up. Uh, with incandescents, you don't have this problem. So right there we're at 32. And there's 34. And there's 36. And there's 3,800. Our goal is the 4,000 mark. Right now we're at 39. And while that's running, I'll go over here. And we're at 121 volts. And we're currently pulling 24 watts. And the box claims 23, so about one over, but it is warming up. Right there we're exactly, okay, we'll, we'll, yep, exactly at 4,000 lux. And I'm pulling 24 watts at 0 0.33 amps. So I'm going to go ahead and write that down here. So 24 watts on the new one at 0 0.33 amps. And for Lux, we're actually at 4,100. Forty-one hundred Lux. So I'm going to go ahead and shut this guy off. And also, in case Ambo is wondering, I have the photometer calibrated to zero with the ambient light that's in the room here. So you can see if I block it, it goes negative. So here is another 100 watt bulb, incandescent, and this one is brand new. So go ahead and fire this guy up. This one instantly jumps up, there's no warm up. And we're at 4100, which is 100 watt equivalent, a little bit above. And we're currently pulling 0 0.80 amps, and it's pulling 97 watts. So we're at 97 watts and 0 0.80 amps. And it's sitting rock solid right at that value, so I don't have to keep it running. All right, so we basically found that the compact fluorescent and the incandescent both hold up to the claims in which they state. Everything on the box matches up. It is a 100 watt equivalent. So. Why am I running this test? Well, here's what got me curious. Here is a compact fluorescent and an incandescent. They have both been in use for four and a half years. These are both in my garage. They were installed within a few months of each other. This is about as close as I can get. And this has still got some dust on it. So let's see if the values still hold true as they get older. First up is the compact fluorescent. So right out of the box, it's sitting right now at 2500 lux and we'll let that guy warm up and while he's warming up we'll check the watts here it's pulling 19 watts so its power use has actually gone down so on the old bulbs we're currently at for wattage 20 watts and current is 0.27. Now it's warming up. We're at like 3200. Looking like it's stopping about there. Uh, 34. And there we are. 35. 
3,500 lux on that one. So go ahead and shut that guy off. I'm now going to put in the old incandescent bulb. Also, too, these are all 100 watt and they're all soft white. And this guy's sitting at 3,800 lux. So that's 3,800 lux, and looks like 102 watts. It's actually pulling more power. So it's going to be at 102, and current is going to be 0.84. So we go ahead and shut that off. I just realized I forgot to write down the value for the original new 100 watt soft white. And that value is. 4100. All right. So here's another interesting fact about incandescence and compact fluorescence. There's a unit of measure called power factor. Uh, that value, to explain, it would take a lot more than this video will contain. So just to tell you, power factor is something that a lot of power companies for commercial institutions will charge you to correct because it affects the power grid. So this meter also has power factor. Incandescent light bulb is 0 0.99. Uh, for the sake of this video, the closer to one, the better. So an incandescent light bulb being resistive load is almost perfect. There's no power factor correction there, so no cost incurred. I'm going to put the compact fluorescent in. And our power factor drops to 0 0.57, so by half. So you're paying for a good bit of power correction on the switching circuit that's inside the light bulb. It acts like an inductive load. So let's see if that holds true on the older bulbs. Even R2 agrees. So here's our incandescent, and we're at 0 0.99. This is the old bulb. And here is the old compact fluorescent. And it looks to be about the same, 0 0.65, a little bit better. So that really hasn't changed over the years. So now that we've finished the testing, what does all the data mean? So let's take a look at the data. If you look at the new compact fluorescence, the new compact fluorescent pulled 24 watts to produce 4,100 lux. The incandescent pulled 97 watts to produce 4,100 lux. Same light output that holds true to the claim, 100 watt equivalent. The interesting thing is when the bulb gets to get older. Same compact fluorescent, when it gets older, will pull 20 watts as opposed to 24 and only produce 3,500 lux. That definitely goes down to be expected. The incandescent bulb, on the other hand, pulls 102 watts to produce 3,800 lux. So it produces a little bit more than the compact fluorescent, but it's pulling 102 watts. Originally it was pulling 97. So its power consumption went up, whereas the CFL, the cost went down, or consumption went down as it got older. Now, I compared this data over some time to make these numbers mean something. So, if you take the average lifespan of a compact fluorescent, which is 6,000 hours, and then one of the incandescent, which is 1,000 hours, it takes about six incandescent light bulbs to run the same lifespan as one compact fluorescent. Now, if you take the power that I calculated here, and you break it out over a 1,000 hour span, which is three hours a day for one year, the in incandescent bulb will use 100 kilowatt hours of power. The CFL, on the other hand, will only use 23 kilowatt hours. Now, my power rate is 8.3 cents per kilowatt hour, so if I break that down, the incandescent bulb will cost me $8.30 to run for the one year, whereas the CFL will only cost me $1.90. That is a difference of $6.20 more it will cost me to run the incandescent light bulb. That doesn't seem like a lot. If I break it down over the 6,000 hour lifespan of the compact fluorescent, that comes out to $31 more it cost me to run the incandescent light bulb over the compact fluorescent. That includes the purchase price of all the additional bulbs. I'm Doug for DJD Laboratories. I hope this video is informative. Thank you for watching.